This is part six of my course on analog tape machines. In this section, I go through the steps to calibrate an analog tape machine, and I walk you through input and output calibration in detail. Alignment is basically the same for all pro machines. The terminology changes slightly between brands. An example would be playback level is called repro gain on an Ampex machine when it's simply called level or repro on a Studer. But the adjustments are the same. Before you align your machine, you first have to do an input output calibration. This matches the levels going in and out of your tape machine to your audio console. You don't need to do this before every alignment. It's just done during the initial setup of your tape machine in the studio. There are three stages or groups of adjustments in all alignments. The first stage or group of adjustments is reproduce alignment. This is where we calibrate our machine to a test tape or reference tones. The controls are reproduce level, reproduce treble or high frequency, and reproduce azimuth. In the prior stage, we calibrated our machine's playback to our reference level. In this group, we adjust our record parameters while monitoring the changes on the reproduce head. At this stage, we can also record project reference tones. The record alignment controls are record level, record treble, record bias, and record azimuth. And because there's no low frequency record adjustment, we now adjust reproduce low frequency or bass. The third and last stage is sync playback. These adjustments are only needed on multi-track machines on which we'll be overdubbing. In this stage, we adjust audio playback from our record head. We can use a test tape for these adjustments, but the alignment will be more accurate if we use tones printed when we did our record alignment. This adjustment assures perfect audio match when we punch in on recorded tracks. The controls are sync playback level, sync playback high frequency, and sync playback low frequency or bass. First, we're going to adjust input and output levels. This doesn't need to be done every time you align your machine, but you should check it to be sure it matches your console. Be sure you don't change any adjustments you don't intend to. The simplest way to avoid doing so is to cover all adjustment screws you'll not be using with a piece of tape. Adjust input level to read 0VU. Ampex ATR machines and some Studer machines do not have input adjustments. They rely on internal meter and gain structure calibrations. Feed 0VU at 1 kHz from your console or plus 4 dBU if you're using an AC voltmeter. Switch your machine to input. Turning the input trimmer on each channel, adjust each track to read 0VU. Set output level to read 0VU or plus 4DBU on your console. With 1K feeding your machine, Look at the machine's return at the console. Adjust trimmers labeled output and set your machine to read 0VU on your console meters. If you happen to notice a few tracks that are reading 6dB down at the console meters, be sure your wiring's good before boosting the level on the output of the machine. If you have a transformerless tape machine and console, a broken wire will cause a 6dB level loss. This should be repaired before you continue the alignment. This is also a good time to check the polarity of your wiring. Turn off all the channels on your console. Set all your faders to zero. While monitoring the return of the 1 kHz signal going through the tape machine, turn on channel 1. 
then turn on channel 2. Watch your mix bus. The meter should go up when the channels are added. Do the same comparison for channels 1 and 3, 1 and 4, and so on. If you see a channel that goes down when you mix it with channel 1, that channel is wired backwards or out of phase. This should be fixed because it will cause problems later when you try to adjust azimuth. You can use the same test for Pro Tools wiring or any hard disk recorder. If you don't have all your channels connected to a console, there's another option that works just as well. You'll need either a portable oscillator, or you can use an oscillator plug-in in your hard disk recorder. You'll also need a digital voltmeter. Set your oscillator to 1 kHz and measure between pins 2 and 3 of the XLR connector feeding the machine. Adjust the output of the oscillator for 1.23 volts. That's very close to plus 4 dB or 0 VU level. 1.228 volts is actually the exact number for a plus 4 dBU, but within a couple hundred volts, you're close enough. If you're using a cheap voltmeter, I would suggest you first set the level at 60 hertz because inexpensive voltmeters aren't accurate in the full audio bandwidth. Plug that XLR into each track, trim the input adjustment of each track to read 0 VU. Now connect the voltmeter to the output of your tape machine and adjust the output to read 1.23 volts. That is the end of part six. In the next few chapters, I will go over in detail reproduce alignment, azimuth, and record alignment. If you want to see more of this professional audio content, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps.